Time for my own bit of advertising. Yep, come on out this weekend for fun, food, and games. Sunday eve is the fried chicken dinner. That's always a good time, lots of good food. Maybe grab a beer, the kids will have games to play. And there may be adult games too. Play some card games under the pavilion. I might be there too, but most likely on Sunday. So hopefully we'll see you all then. Hello, BAME Farm fans. This might make a few people scream at the screen. A few people might clap. Somebody might pass out. Who knows? So we're out here doing some control of weeds. Now, in years past, I've been out here with the multivator, now tilling under the weeds. You're going full mechanical control, which works as, you know, about as well as I can control the tractor and move the tiller around and get close to the rows. And I can get much closer spraying. And someone's gonna say I should be using a hooded sprayer. Well, of some sort. Um, the wind is calm enough. Now I do have, let's say a box that I can use if the wind picks up, but the wind's been calm today, and I usually try to do this on the calmer days anyways. So right now I'm carefully watching my pressure, which is mostly just by judging how big the droplets and how wide the pattern is coming out of the nozzle down there, to be very careful next to the plants. And I've already done this once already this year in this area. Um, this plastic's been on the ground Oh, um, almost, almost a month now, maybe five weeks. You can see right there it's starting to break down where it's cracking. Of course, this area can have water issues based on how dark and scummy it is and the cracks and the dirt. At least with the last week of rain we've had, we have not uh, accumulated too large of puddles. And we're going to use the plastic at this end of the garden Hopefully it's still in existence. And we're gonna plant some late zucchini and cucumbers probably here towards the end of the end of July. It's I don't know, July 13th or 14th today. <laughs> in this garden we have cabbage, squash, cucumbers, melons, some viney things, and mom might have a row or two of gourds over there. And there's a row of beans also. And this went in last. This is where you saw us direct by us. I got video of mom direct seeding over here. So I'm spraying around up between the rows. That'll really make some folks cringe maybe. Yeah, so I mean I like the rototilling except I couldn't always get uh, as close to the plastic as I wanted. And then in a week I'd have more stuff sprouting. Now with the Roundup it's been a few weeks since I sprayed last. Hopefully this will be the last time because the viney things will start breaking out over the row by the next time it's ready to spray. Now some things like peppers don't vine out and we're just gonna <laughs> say jump forward two weeks but we're gonna look at an area that I'd already sprayed and that's probably been well over 10 days ago that I sprayed and the weeds were much much taller here. So we're taking like a no-till approach, uh, you know, with spraying between the rows that hopefully, you know, by not rototilling, you know, we're not turning up more seed into that prime layer where it don't want to germinate, that we're just taking care of whatever germinates, I don't know, say in the top inch or two, or maybe less than an inch. Don't quote me on that, but the point is is that we're not turning over the dirt to bring up more seed to the surface to germinate. That hopefully we're leaving it buried and we're just killing off the little bit that sprouts on top. One, say another reason behind spraying and not necessarily the rototilling between the rows is that when we get a whole bunch of rain, which is all too often possible and we have to come out here and pick, the, the tillage keeps the top of the soil loose. And then we get a whole bunch of rain, or will, possibly at some point. 
And then when we come out here to pick vegetables, we're sinking up to our eyeballs, trying to find cucumbers, squash, tomatoes, whatever. So yes, while I do like the, say, mechanical means, it is a slight bit faster than this. And we can see the results right now. We don't have to wait a few days to see things turn yellow. Um, it is going to be nice when we come out here to pick um, and the ground has firmed back up. I mean, I know we got a till to lay the plastic, but by the time we're picking, you know, now, August, September, um, and it does rain a bunch, like it's prone to, we don't have to worry about sinking so deep. We may get a little mud on our boots, but we won't be losing our boot in the mud because of the looseness of it. And I'm finding out that, you know, these weeds will keep sprouting all summer long. Even though the soil hasn't been turned at all. So who knows why they want to sprout. It's a good thing we have corn and beans down to a science that they'll germinate within hopefully a, a week or so of planting them in the soil. If there's adequate moisture. And we've definitely had adequate moisture to get these weeds out of the ground. So why do they just keep germinating wave after wave after wave? Who knows? Hey, I gotta do this in, uh, say, small spray patterns. I'm keeping the nozzle close. The winds are very light and variable. I probably have more wind coming from the greenhouse fans over there than anything else, which that's somewhat dangerous because that's across the rows instead of with the rows. Today, any prevailing breeze has been coming down these rows. And I still have to spray back there. The good news is because we get later in the day, especially the golden hour right before dusk, the winds get really calm then, except I hate spraying that late because I need this the water droplets to dry, which can be a challenge to get them to dry before the dew sets in because I have such large droplets, but that eliminates any drift. And you know, I'm talking about, I'm working about drift of inches here not drift of yards or feet or anything longer than that. I'm worried about drift of inches here because I'm trying to get so close to the plants. But yeah, hood would be nice, except I wasn't always great about row spacing. And some of these are closer than the box, which let's go see that. They had put together this box. It's gonna call it our spray shield. Not quite a hood, but I can put the nozzle down in and go, you know, wall to wall and move it down the row. And usually I'll move it a little bit and then spray and then move it again and then spray. It's just made a, some sort of like sign, a plastic sign material. Um, of course that is a sheet of uh, Lexan, I believe. That corrugated like greenhouse plastic board stuff and it rolls along and it gets it done um, that works best when you have tall weeds and tomatoes and let's go see uh, that area ain't she a butte Clark Got to steal that from a movie so we can see the progression of things dying out here and I sprayed all these rows unprotected very carefully and well the plants are starting to break down but there isn't a whole lot of re-sprouting yet because this was sprayed with very tall weeds we'll say in fact we come down here into the tomatoes and we can see just how tall the tomatoes were sprayed a little bit after everything else and I had to use the box and the box would keep back the plants and since the tomato plants aren't wide at the bottom uh, we're okay now I, I gotta walk back over to the cabbage but the cabbage leaves are down low and using the box doesn't do much because the chemical will you know whatever I get on the wall will fall down and drip and if the cabbage leaf is too low and wide it'll get underneath that wall and then we'll have problems so out here you can see there's some greenery now that this was very tall like it was at least a foot or more and I had to go through especially here in the beans 
and it was a lot of work. I had to take my feet and trample it down into the center and then spray very carefully over top. I had to do that in the tomatoes too. Now, I mean, see how tall the grass and stuff is here. That's at least how tall the weeds were. You know, well, here's a few leftover weeds. You know, we had, that's well over a foot. So I trampled the edges in to give me a nice clean edge to run the box over and then spray. And it cleaned up pretty good. Sometimes the middle didn't die very well because there was so much plant material covering other plant material, but it slowed the weeds down that we should be good for a very long time. And it might be sufficient to last until the end of the season. Now, unfortunately, the squash area over there, they were growing over too much and that's just going to be, well, we mowed down the weeds and everything's vining out so much that the best I can do is come back with a grass herbicide for soybeans like post or like a generic clethodim and uh, kill all the weeds that way. But it's staying fairly clean out here. This, uh, I'll kill those cockleburs real quick. I know maybe in a couple weeks I'll be able to come back and get a few weeds here. But this is definitely down to a dull roar and not bad. Not sprouting back too fast. And while we're at it, we'll throw this tidbit in. Well, these are the jalapenos. And, you know, for middle of July, for us, having peppers like we do right now is amazing. Like, this is a big bell pepper down here. Uh, and typically, we don't have much for peppers until August. And you, for as wet as it's been, I'm surprised. Peppers are usually like hot and dry, not usually too much moisture. We got a red one there already. These uh, hot banana peppers are going crazy. And there's peppers everywhere on those. So I don't know why the peppers are doing so good. Dad said he started the seeds two weeks earlier um, this winter. I'll kill these few weeds we didn't get the first time. Yeah, he said he started them two weeks earlier. I guess that made all the difference in getting them going out here. The okra is loving the, um, the heat and it's staying dry enough. So I guess we'll uh, call this a fun farming video of weed killing. And if you watch this long, I'll throw this in there. Someone's probably gonna gripe about uh, PPE or whatever on this. Well, uh, Monsanto says this stuff is safe, right? It's supposed to be safe enough to drink any harm it's only harmful in the state of california and we're not in california so i guess the roundup can't get us because we're not in cali so now i'll catch you guys later and uh well happy farming and we'll watch the sweet corn and all its tasseling glory out in the distance